pra Oslo, pra sair no Oslo do Logo Oslo, da terra do bacalhau Oi, tudo bem? Welcome to this ninth lesson in the special series I've created to help you to jumpstart your Brazilian Portuguese. I'm Professor Jason, and my topic today is verbs as vocabulary. Now, what I mean by that is that I'm going to be focusing on the meanings and uses of verbs. In particular, those of 34 mostly regular verbs that are used frequently in everyday situations. So as we go through each of these verbs, I will show the forms or conjugations in the present, future, and simple past, but I'm going to spend much more time talking about their meanings and uses. So I'm going to provide several easy to understand examples for each of them. Now all of this means that you're in for a very useful, but also a very long lesson, probably in excess of an hour. Um, 34 verbs is a lot to cover, but it's going to be worth it, I promise. Então, vamos começar. Let's get started. Okay, so allow me to start out with an overview of today's lesson. I'm going to start out by talking about why it's important to learn verbs as vocabulary, to focus on their uses and meanings, and not just on their forms or conjugations. Then I will talk about the three main time frames and the corresponding tenses, just kind of give a brief overview of how to talk about the present, past, and future. And then I'm going to focus on each of 34 verbs that are used commonly all the time to talk about people's everyday activities. So I'll present the forms without going into too much detail, and then I'll also talk about each verb's basic meanings and common uses and give plenty of examples of each. In the next lesson, lesson 10, I'll apply the same approach to 20 additional verbs, many of which have irregular forms. It's important to know how to conjugate verbs, that is, to produce the right forms for indicating who carries out an action and in what time frame. But it's also important to know what verbs mean, and lots of them. In other words, we need to learn verbs as vocabulary and not just grammar. Now, all the verbs covered in this lesson and in the next, lesson 10, are what I like to refer to as must-know or go-to verbs. That's because they're used very, very frequently, and especially in the case of those covered in the next lesson, they're quite versatile in terms of their uses and meanings. You could also call these verbs high-mileage verbs, since learning them gives you the most semantic bang for your buck, so to speak. So by using these verbs well, you can communicate more with less. But what about conjugation, or using the right forms to indicate the who and the when of an action? In the case of all the verbs we're going to talk about today, you'll definitely want to be able to recognize and produce the forms for each subject position, right? I, you, he, she, we, you guys, they, etc. In the present, past, and future time frames. Now if you recall, we covered present tense conjugation in detail in a previous lesson, I think it was lesson 7, and we'll cover the simple past talking about the future and using dual verb constructions later in the series. In this lesson, I'll provide the forms in case you'd like to go back and review them, but I plan to focus much more on meanings and actual uses. You'll see examples in the past, present, and future time frames, and I'll provide the English translations to guide you. One more thing. As I go through the examples for each verb, pay special attention to any prepositions I use with them. I'll highlight those in white. Words like a, de, com, in, para, etc. Because many verbs tend to be used with particular prepositions which can in fact alter or expand their basic meanings. For example, in English we have the verb to speak, but when we actually use it, we say things like to speak about, or to speak to, or to speak with, and so on. I like to make a distinction between time frames and verb tenses, okay? Um, the three main time frames that we use when we speak are to refer to the present, the past, and the future. Although there may be more than one set of forms or conjugations or tenses, if you will, for each of those time frames. So we're going to spend a little bit of time going over how to use verbs to narrate or to describe in each of these time frames. And you'll see examples of each time frame when we get to the individual verbs in the lesson. Many of the verb forms you're going to see in this lesson used in the example are in the present tense. Now the present tense is a very versatile and broad form in Portuguese as in Spanish. For example, you can use present tense forms to describe current conditions, to say what someone routinely or customarily does, to narrate what someone is doing right now, 
to tell what someone will do in the near future. You're going to see an example of this in just a second. And of course, to make statements or to make questions, right? To ask questions. So, as an example, right? Eu trabalho numa faculdade. Eu trabalho numa faculdade. I work at a university. I'm saying what I routinely do. A Ana Maria conversa com a Julia. She is talking to Julia right now. Or an example of the near future. Você sabe a que horas sai o voo amanhã? Você sabe a que horas sai o voo amanhã? Do you know what time the flight departs tomorrow? I'm actually asking about the future, but I'm using a present tense form. In this video lesson, you're also going to see several verbs that are conjugated in the simple past. Now, what can this particular form or tense be used to do? You can use simple past to talk about what someone did or what happened at a certain point, point of time in the past. You can, of course, make statements or ask and answer questions. Some examples of the simple past. Eu falei com o João ontem. I spoke to him yesterday. Ela escreveu essa mensagem na quarta. She wrote that message on Wednesday. Again, narrating what happened or what someone did at a certain point in the past. And a question. Você foi à igreja no domingo passado? Você foi à igreja no domingo passado? Did you go to church last Sunday? And then finally, throughout this video lesson, you're going to see examples of this paraphrastic future, the compound future. In other words, we're going to be talking about what people are going to do. This is formed by taking the verb in Portuguese, ir, which means to go, right, in the present tense, and then adding the unconjugated or infinitive form of the main verb we want to use. So it's the equivalent of talking about what someone is going to do at some point in the future. We have this exact parallel verb usage in English. And of course, also it's good to keep in mind that all these tenses and forms can be used to make statements, affirmative statements, to ask and answer questions, and you'll see multiple examples. So an example of this paraphrastic or compound going to future, right? I'm going to study tomorrow. Eu vou estudar amanhã. Or we're going to have breakfast at 7. Vamos tomar café da manhã a sete da manhã. Are you going to work tonight? A question. Você vai trabalhar hoje à noite? Você vai trabalhar hoje à noite? So that's the compound future, and it's probably the most commonly used way to talk about the future in Portuguese. All right, so here we go. We're embarking on our 34 verb journey. Hope you have your notebook ready, ready to take some notes. What you're going to see for each of the 34 verbs are two slides. The first one looks like this. You'll see the infinitive or unconjugated form, in this, in this case, falar. It's basic, most straightforward meanings. Falar means to speak or to talk. Then you're going to have the table right, right beneath that where I show in columns the forms, right, the conjugations in the present, the simple past, and the paraphrastic or compound future that we just talked about, okay? Then right below that, I'm going to give some common uses. For example, falar can be used to indicate that somebody speaks a language, falar português, that uh, to talk to or with someone. And here I have, again, remember, preposition in white, falar com somebody, right? To talk on the phone, falar ao ou no telefone, or to talk about something. Falar de, falar em, ou falar sobre algo, religião, por exemplo. And then again, using falar, verb number one, as our example, for each verb, you're going to see a second slide, right, after I introduce the meaning, the forms, and the uses of examples. And I'll try to hit as many examples of uses as I can, but I want to include things like affirmative statements, negative statements, questions, responses, a past action, a future action, and even a dual verb construction, right? And so pay attention to the arrows when I when I use these examples, okay? So some examples with the verb falar, to speak or to talk. O Gabriel fala muito na aula. He talks a lot in class. Você fala português? Do you speak Portuguese? No, eu não falo português. So when I ask a question, I'm going to try to answer it logically 
but repeating the verb. A Luciani falou con un João. Did she? Did she talk to João? So that's the simple past. A Luciani falou con. Eles vão falar sobre os seus planos. That's the paraphrastic or, or compound future. Eles vão falar sobre os seus planos. They're going to talk about their plans. And then finally, a dual verb construction. A Michele gosta de falar ao telefone. A Michele gosta de falar ao telefone. She likes talking on the phone. Moving on to common verb number two of 32, and it's comer, to eat, comer. So you can see the forms in the present, past, and future. I'm not going to actually comment on these throughout the lesson. Let's skip to the common uses. Of course, you can use comer to say that somebody eats something, as in to eat an apple, comer uma maçã, or to eat somewhere in a restaurant, uh, to eat with somebody using the preposition com, or to eat at a certain time using the preposition as before the number for the hour. Notice in the second usage there, en un, the preposition plus the article, um, the indefinite article, en un. Um, that's the proper way to write it, but many times in speech, people will say, we'll combine that as a contraction. So, comer num restaurante. Let's go ahead and look at the examples. So here you can see some common examples of those usages of the, of the verb comer, to eat, right? João não come carne, he doesn't eat meat, negative statement. Vocês comem em casa? Question. Comemos sim, quase todos os dias. Response. You can use it in the past, of course. Meus primos comeram no shopping. Future. Aline vai comer, that compound future. Vai comer aqui hoje à noite? So future question. To verb construction. Ela gosta de comer naquele restaurante. All right, the third common verb we're going to look at is beber, okay, beber. You can see that I'm not going in alphabetical order, which may be a bit confusing. Instead, I've kind of tried to group the verbs by, by topic, by meaning, so comer, beber, okay, you might see some themes emerge like that, all right? Um, so, you have the forms there in the present, past, and future. I've also put on each slide, or the slides where it's applicable, a related verb, so you can use beber to drink something, and in many cases, you can also use the verb tomar to drink. That verb comes up later in the lesson. So, to drink something, as in to drink a beer, beber uma cerveja, uma cerveja ou um suco, a juice. To drink somewhere, if you want to indicate where someone drinks, beber em um boteco, num boteco. To drink with someone, beber com seus amigos. Let's look at the examples. An affirmative statement, such as Jorge e Ana bebem vinho no jantar. Você bebe suco no café da manhã? Right? Café da manhã is breakfast. No, não bebo suco. Bebo leite. Seus pais beberam na festa de ano novo? Past question. Meus colegas vão beber naquele bar. To indicate where in the future. A Julia não gosta de beber água com gás. So, gostar, conjugated, plus the infinitive form or unconjugated form, is to like to do something. She doesn't like to drink sparkling water. Okay, moving on to the fourth verb, escutar, to listen, to listen to, or to hear, very similar in terms of meanings and use with the related verb, ouvir, okay? To listen to someone, for example, escutar seus pais, to listen to your parents, very commonly used with escutar música or músicas, songs, or to listen to whatever else, right? To listen to hear complaints, right? Escutar reclamações. Those are some common uses, maybe. Moving on to some examples that illustrate a few of those uses. I can't hear you. Eu não escuto você. Or I don't listen to you, alternatively. Não escuto você. I can't hear you. Vocês escutam músicas em português? Do you guys listen to songs in Portuguese? Escutamos sim, e em inglês também. We do listen to them. Seus filhos escutaram o sei de ontem? Past action is a question. Vou escutar, that compound future. Vou escutar sua mensagem mais tarde. O que você está escutando? What are you listening to? This estar plus the participle, present participle form that ends in ando, endo, or indo, right? Indicates right now. O que você está escutando? Very common verb number six is olhar, to look, to look at, or to watch something. 
very closely re related to the verbs ver, which also means to look at, and assistir, which also means to watch or to observe something. Okay, we'll see those verbs later on. Actually, assistir later on, ver in the next lesson. So, olhar can mean to look at someone, right? Olha para ele, olha para ele. It's very often used, this verb olhar, it's important to know it in the command or imperative form. So, look at that, look at him, look at her, right? Olha, oli, okay? To look at pictures, very common use, olhar fotos, right? You could also use ver fotos. To look at other things, whatever else, right? Watch the road, right? Olhar para estrada, para estrada. Or to look closely in sort of a fixed expression, right? Olhar bem, olha bem, right? Really, you know, look closely at what you're doing. Olhar bem. Moving on to some examples with the verb olhar, right? Um, to look at something or to look at someone. Your sister never looks at me. Su irmã nunca olha para mim. Seus pais sempre olham seu celular. Do they always look at your phone? No. Like to check your messages? No. Mas olham o do meu irmão. No, but they look at my brothers. Did you really take a close look before crossing the street? Olhou bem antes de atravessar a rua? I'm going to look at the pictures later, future. Vou olhar as fotos depois. And the old men were looking at the clouds, right? Os velhinhos estão, or are looking, excuse me, estão olhando as nuvens. So, common verb number seven, assistir, to watch, to attend, also, is closely related in most of its uses to the verbs olhar and ver, to look at, to watch, okay? One of the most common uses is to watch a TV, to watch a movie, to watch a TV show, to watch a movie, to watch a program, to watch the game, or to attend the class. Notice on these last two uses, right? Assistir o jogo, or you might hear some people say assistir ao jogo, using the uh, preposition a combined with the definite article o, right? Assistir ao jogo, or assistir à aula. When there's a component that could be interpreted as being present to watch something, often you'll hear that um, preposition being introduced. Otherwise, if you're just watching something on TV, you're a passive spectator remotely, usually you don't have the preposition. But this is in flux right now in Brazilian Portuguese. Okay. So let's take a look at some examples of the verb assistir. Right? She doesn't watch soap operas. Maria não assiste novelas. A Maria não assiste novelas. Do your brothers and sisters watch TV series, seriados? Seus irmãos assistem seriados na TV? I watch the newscast, o jornal. Assisto o jornal todos os dias. Assisto o jornal todos os dias. Did Renata attend class yesterday? A Renata assistiu às aulas ontem. Assistiu às aulas ontem. So, assistir a aula is a very common use of the verb assistir to mean attend. Vocês vão assistir a um desfile de carnaval? Are you going to watch? But also that idea of be there present, right? So, it's kind of a combination of to watch, to witness, and to be there. Vocês vão assistir a um desfile de carnaval? Nós queremos assistir à palestra. Nós queremos assistir à palestra. We want to listen to, or attend, or watch the presentation. Very common verb number eight is entender, to understand. Entender, you can see the forms in the present, past, and future, related, of course, pretty much synonymous with comprender, which is maybe not quite as frequent. So you can understand something, or you can ask someone if they understand. Like, do you follow? Do you understand? Você entende? Eu entendo. Um, you can understand something, of course. Eu entendo a situação. You can understand someone. Não entendo, meu amigo. Or you can know about. You can use entender to express that somebody really understands or knows or is versed in a certain topic or subject. Ele entende de psicologia. De psicologia. So let's take a look at some examples of the verb entender, of those uses. Eu entendo as regras do jogo. I understand the rules of the game. Você entende este filme? No. Não entendo nada. Os alunos entenderam a explicação. They understood. Past action. 
João não vai entender essa mensagem. Immediate future, right? Or future. He's not going to understand that message. Ele quer entender mais de física. He wants to have a better understanding about physics. Common verb number nine is extremely common and frequent in Brazilian Portuguese. It has a lot of uses. We're really just scratching the surface here. Um, but here are some of the most common. You can see it's used kind of in expressions, idiomatically. Literally, it means to take, or a secondary meaning is to drink, which is related to the verb beber. You can see the forms of tomar, right? So one of the common uses is to make or take a decision. Tomar uma decisão. To drink something. Tomar água, tomar suco, tomar cerveja, tomar leite. To have breakfast is an expression. Tomar café da manhã. To take a bath, another expression. Tomar um banho. Vou tomar um banho. I'm going to take a bath or a shower. Vou tomar um banho. So here we see some examples of those uses, right? A Luciana toma água de coco na praia. Você sempre toma café da manhã? Do you always have breakfast? Tomo sim, geralmente em casa. Quem tomou essa decisão? To make a decision in the past. Quem tomou essa decisão? Os meninos vão tomar banho à noite. They're going to take a bath. Você não quer tomar o seu remédio? You don't want to take your medication. So again, to ingest something, right, is sort of that usage of to take into your body, right? Você não quer tomar o seu remédio? Our number 10 common verb in Brazilian Portuguese is levar, to take or to carry. You can see the forms. And it's related to the verb trazer, to bring. So we can talk about taking something or carrying something, right? Levar esse livro, to carry this book. Levar esta sacola, right? Um, to carry this plastic bag or shopping bag. To take something to someone. Levar um presente. And then we have the preposition para ele. Right, to introduce the indirect object. Levar um presente para ele. Or you can also, there's an idiomatic expression. Leva muito tempo. Right? Often asked and answered in a series of a question and response. Right? To ask or to say if, some, if something takes a long time to do. You'll see an example of this on the next slide. Levar muito tempo. So just a few examples to illustrate some of those uses on this slide here of levar. She takes her backpack to school, right? Maybe the most straightforward use. A Monica leva, leva sua mochila para a escola. A Monica leva sua mochila para a escola. And then here's this specialized use of, of levar muito tempo, right? Leva muito tempo, I left tempo out, which you can do. Leva muito tempo para aprender inglês. Não leva não. No, it doesn't take long, of course not. English is easy. Vocês levaram algo no churrasco ontem? Did you take something to the cookout? Vocês levaram algo no churrasco ontem? Eu vou te levar para jantar hoje à noite. So you can take someone out to do something. Vou te levar para jantar. I'm going to take you out for dinner or to dinner. Nós não podemos levar nada ao estádio. We can't take anything to the stadium. Very common verb in Brazilian Portuguese number 11 is trabalhar to work. You can see the forms. It's a regular verb, as most of the verbs in this lesson are. Common uses, where you see it used a lot in Brazilian Portuguese, of course, to indicate when someone works. I can say they work every day, they work on Saturdays, they work tomorrow. To say where someone works, right? Again, they work at a hotel, they work at a university. Ang. The preposition is ang, with the indefinite article. To say with whom someone works, right? works with relatives, works with his father, works with her best friend. To indicate a person's profession using, right, como. So I could say, she works as an attorney. Ela trabalha como advogada. Or to say what area, what general field, or with what types of things a person works, using com, right? Trabalhar com educação, por exemplo. As with many verbs in this lesson, the uses of trabalhar are fairly straightforward and parallel with those of their corresponding verbs in English. So, you know, it's not too difficult, okay? Pedro doesn't work on Saturdays. O Pedro não trabalha aos sábados. Do you work together? Vocês trabalham juntos? Trabalhamos sim, na pizzaria. A Isabel trabalhou nessa empresa. Where did she work? Did she work there? 
A Isabel trabalhou nessa empresa. Vou trabalhar bastante durante o verão. Future. Ela quer trabalhar com animais. She wants to work with animals in some capacity. Maybe she wants to be a vet, I could say. Ela quer trabalhar com animais. Common verb number 12 is extremely straightforward, parallel with the English verb to cook. You can see the forms, present, past, and future. Some of the uses that you might encounter, right? Someone might talk about what they cook. They cook something. In this case, cozinhar o peixe, o frango, right? Whatever it happens to be. You can say that somebody cooks well, cozinhar bem, or they cook poorly, badly, cozinhar mal, okay? You can say that someone cooks for someone else, all right? So again, like I just mentioned, I think you'll realize by looking at the examples that cozinhar is very similar to, in terms of uses, with his English counterpart. Minha sogra cozinha muito bem. My mother-in-law cooks very well. Ela cozinha muito bem. True story, by the way. Você cozinha para seu marido? So this is, that's this use of cooking some, for someone. Para seu marido? Você cozinha para seu marido? No. Ele cozinha para mim. Also a true story. A Bruna já cozinhou o frango? Has, Brun, has Bruna already, or did she already cook the chicken? Minha mãe vai cozinhar amanhã. She's going to cook tomorrow. A Fabiana não sabe cozinhar. She doesn't know how to cook. So again, that's a dual, the last example on most of these slides is a dual verb construction. The first verb is conjugated. The first verb in this case is saber. And then the second verb, cozinhar, the main verb, is not conjugated. Doesn't know how to cook. No sabe cozinhar. Really common verb number 13 is lava, which means to wash. The most common uses are, of course, to wash something, like the dishes, a louça, or a car, the car, o carro. But it's also very commonly used to indicate that somebody is going to wash part of their body, such as their hands or their hair. So, here are some examples of those basic uses of the verb lavar. Eu não lavo minhas roupas à mão. So you can wash clothes, talking about here. I don't wash my clothes by hand. Você lava seu carro aos sábados? Do you wash your car on Saturdays? Lavo sim, todo sábado. Elas lavaram as suas mãos antes de comer? Past action, right? Did they wash their hands before eating? Elas lavaram suas ma as mãos. As mãos antes de comer. A Natalia vai lavar o cabelo antes de dormir. She's going to wash her hair. O Rodrigo não gosta de lavar a louça. He doesn't. Rodrigo does not like to do the dishes. So common verb in Brazilian Portuguese number 14, limpar, is related to the previous one, lavar, which was to wash. Limpar means to clean, right? So the common uses and a related verb is arrumar which we'll see in just a second, the next verb, which means sort of to organize, to straighten up, ahumar. But limpar is when you're actually cleaning something, right? So common uses include to clean the house, limpar a casa. You can clean a bedroom or another room in the house, limpar o banheiro, a cozinha, etc. Or there's an idiomatic expression that's used when you want to express that all of a sudden the weather improved, the sky cleared, right? You can say, o tempo limpo. O dia limpo, o céu limpo, right? So, o tempo limpo, limpar o tempo, means for the sun to come out, for the clouds to clear. So here are some examples illustrating those uses of the verb limpar. Limpamos a cozinha depois de cozinhar. Você limpa o banheiro da sua casa? Não, eu não limpo o banheiro. <laughs> Estava chovendo... Mas o tempo limpo. So here's that use of the sky clear, right? Estava, chov estava chovendo, mas o tempo limpo. And I'm told that this use is particularly frequent if you're at the beach, you want it to be sunny, right? So in that kind of beach or coast environment. O tempo limpo. Vamos limpar a casa amanhã. We're going to do that tomorrow. <laughs> Meus filhos não querem limpar seus quartos. My kids don't want to clean their rooms. All right, common verb number 15, ahumar, means to arrange or to straighten up. And so in that sense, it's related to the slightly more formal verb, organizar, organizar. So its common uses of ahumar include 
to arrange or to set up something. So in that sense, kind of you could, you know, you could straighten up something on the table. You could make the bed. Also to tidy up a place or a room, arrumar a casa, where I could straighten up my office, arrumar o meu escritório. Also it's used in the reflexive, right, with reflexive pronouns, me, se, example, right, nos, um, to indicate that somebody's getting ready, usually to go out, right, se arrumar para sair, you'll see an example on the next slide. Um, there's an expression, arrumar un namorado, ou arrumar uma namorada, to find a boyfriend or a girlfriend. Um, you can also make up an excuse, right? Um, not to do something. Ahumar uma desculpa. So I might say, I don't want to take the test on Thursday, so I'm going to ahumar uma desculpa. So of course, here we see a few uh, of those uses illustrated with examples. She doesn't make my bed, the maid. A empregada não arruma minha cama. Você arruma casa aos sábados? Do you straighten up? So not the same as limpar. Você arruma as casas, a casa aos sábados? Arrumo sim, todos os sábados. Minha esposa se arrum, minha, past tense, minha esposa se arrumou antes de sairmos. She got herself ready. So when I say minha esposa se arrumou, that could be anything from, you know, doing her hair, putting on makeup, getting dressed. All of that is arrumar se, right? Se arrumou antes de sairmos. Logo você vai arrumar um emprego. You'll find a job soon. You'll arrange a job soon. A Bruna quer arrumar um namorado. She wants to find herself a boyfriend. Common verb number 16 is descansar, which means to rest. And of course, a related verb would be relaxar, to relax, all right? So it's what you do when you get home from work. It's what you do on the weekends. You can also rest in the sense of needing to take a break from something or from someone, right? So you can say descansar tu trabalho or even from the kids, right? Descansar das crianças. So here I'll go over some examples of the uses of descansar, to rest. O Pedro descansa depois de trabalhar. Vocês descansam na sala, saying where someone rests. Vocês descansam na sala? Não, descansamos no nosso quarto. Você já descansou o suficiente? Have you gotten enough rest? O Tiago vai descansar durante as férias. Durante as férias. So when he's going to indicate sometime in the future. Nós precisamos descansar das crianças. We need to. So here's a two verb construction again, a dual verb construction with the verb precisar, to need, and descansar. Nós precisamos descansar das crianças. Related to that verb, descansar, would be verb number 17, dormir, to sleep. Okay, so again, the uses of dormir are going to be very similar to how you would use the verb to sleep in English. And I think that's true of most of the verbs in this lesson. So we're not complicating things. These common verbs have their counterparts in parallel uses in English for sure. So, of course, you can use uh, dormir in a general sense. You can use it to say how often someone sleeps, you know, muito ou pouco. You can use it to say where someone sleeps, at home or on the sofa, for example. And then there's an idiomatic expression that is very commonly exchanged every morning, right? Someone wakes up, you see him in the kitchen for breakfast, you might say, dormiu bem, dormiu bem. And here are some examples illustrating those uses of dormir. Eu não durmo bem quando faz calor. O bebê dorme com vocês? Dorme sim, senão ele chora muito. Right? He does sleep with us, otherwise he cries a lot. O senhor, right, which is a formal way of saying you. O senhor dormiu bem essa noite? Did you sleep well last night? Eles vão dormir na nossa casa hoje. Eles vão dormir na nossa casa hoje. They're going to. Vocês não podem dormir até tarde amanhã. Vocês não podem dormir até tarde amanhã. So again, dual verb construction with the verb poder, to be able to and to sleep. Verb number 18 is fairly common in Brazilian Portuguese, and it's morar. Now it's related to live. Now it's related, of course, to the verb viver. I guess maybe the distinction might be it's more common to use morar 
when you're talking about someone's residence, where they live. And viver, just in the sense of living, right? Living for something, the existential sense, perhaps. So, morar would be used to say where someone lives, right? Eu não moro em Chicago. Eu moro em Springfield. To say whom someone lives with, right? I might say, ela mora com seu filho. And those are the primary uses of the verb morar. It's not complicated. So, here we have some examples of those uses of the verb morar, to live. Nós não moramos no Rio de Janeiro, unfortunately. We don't live in Rio de Janeiro. Onde você mora? Very, very common question, right? Onde você mora? Moro na Bahia. So, you might, when you usually ask someone where they live, you're asking for the city or the state, right? So, the person might say, moro em Salvador, or they might say, Moro na Bahia. Você morou quanto tempo na Inglaterra? Você morou quanto tempo na Inglaterra? How long did you live there? Sua namorada vai morar com você? Is she going to? Sua namorada vai morar com você? Não. Ela prefere morar com seus pais. So here our, our dual verb construction is with preferir e morar. Common verb number 19 is viajar, to travel, viajar. So obviously some common uses are things like just to travel in general. I might say, do you like to travel? Você gosta de viajar? Right? Do you travel a lot? Você viaja muito? To travel somewhere to indicate where someone travels using the preposition, which is outlined in white, right? Viajar a. To travel with someone, preposition com. To travel at a certain time certain season, right, in a certain month, viajar no outono, por exemplo, and then, of course, to express the means of travel or transport, right, viajar de, viajar de ônibus, viajar de avião, viajar de carro, viajar de trem, etc. Let's then look at some examples of those uses of the verb viajar. Pretty straightforward. A Mariana não viaja no verão saying when she doesn't travel. Não viaja no verão. Do you guys travel a lot? Vocês viajam muito? Viajam muito? Viajamos sim, várias vezes por ano. Um, has he ever traveled to the U.S. destination? O Felipe já viajou aos Estados Unidos? Um, future. A sua irmã vai viajar no verão? Ela prefere viajar de trem, so means of transportation. Ela prefere viajar de trem pela Europa. Moving on to verb number 20. Estudar, to study. Estudar. You can see the forms for present, past, and future. And of course, its common uses are things like just to say that somebody studies, to ask if somebody studies a lot, for example. Você estuda muito? Um, to say what someone studies. Eu estudo física, for example, a, a discipline, right, or a subject. To say who, whom somebody studies with, using the preposition com, or to say where somebody studies, using the preposition em. Here are some examples of that use, of those uses of the verb estudar, right? Pretty straightforward, just as you would use it in English, extremely parallel. O Rafael estuda muito. O que você estuda? So, very common question to ask someone, right? Right up there with, huh, onde você mora? O que você estuda, if they're a student? Estudo biologia. E você? Os alunos estudaram antes da prova? Did they study, right? Past tense. Estudaram? A Silvia vai estudar na biblioteca. And then a dual verb construction using the, the expression de, que, to have to, to need to, to should, to, to should. Você tem que estudar mais. Você tem que estudar mais. I could also say, você deve estudar mais. Somewhat related to that previous verb, estudar, of course, is the verb ler, to read, ler. Now, notice that I've put an asterisk by some of the forms here to indicate that they actually are irregular. They're not conjugated in the form that you would anticipate a regular verb being conjugated, right? So the first person in the present is leu, eu leu. Third person, ele lê, ou você lê. OK, 
Okay, and so there are some irregularities in forming this verb and a couple of others in this lesson. All right, some of the common uses, of course, you can just talk about reading in general. Eu gosto de ler. Ela gosta de ler. Eu leio muito. Ele lê pouco. You can talk about someone reading something in particular. Um livro, uma revista, magazine. Where someone reads using the um, preposition em. So when you see no or na, like ler no parque, ler na praia, it's a contraction of that preposition em with the definite article o or a. You can also talk about how frequently somebody reads, right? Reading every night. Ler todas as noites. Let's look at some examples then of the verb ler. So we could have a negative statement like Alguns alunos não leem muito. Some students don't read much. Você lê o jornal no ônibus. So remember in the previous slide, jornal was the newscast. Jornal also means the newspaper. Você lê o jornal no ônibus. Leo sim. Leo no meu celular. I read it on my cell. Você já leu esse romance? Você já leu esse romance? Past tense form. Have you already read it? So just a quick grammar note, right? Verb tense note. Putting that já in front of the simple past sort of gives it that um, perfect aspect. Have you already done that? Or have you done that yet? Have you read that novel yet? Você já leu esse romance? Ainda não li, mas vou ler em breve. Mas vou ler em breve. Soon. I'm going to read it soon. Future tense. A minha mãe adora ler revistas na praia. So again, dual verb construction with the verb adorar, to really love to do something, and ler. That brings us to verb number 22, common verb number 22, colocar, which means to put or to place something somewhere usually. Now, I really went back and forth as to whether to include colocar in this lesson. Its related verb, por, is much more common, and we'll see that in the next lesson, lesson 10. And many times when you're thinking in English with your Anglo-speaking brain, and you want to say to put or to place, you don't actually end up using colocar, okay? And so you'll see on some of the examples. I couldn't even come up with six examples. And one other note, um, colocar is more frequently used perhaps in the command or imperative form to, to tell someone where to put something, okay? So its uses are colocar, right? To place something somewhere as in colocar os pratos na mesa, put the dishes on the table, or in the, again, the imperative or command form, right? Coloque as canetas na gaveta. Put, I'm telling you directly, put the pens in the drawer. All right, here are some examples then of the verb colocar. And notice the, the format of this slide is a little bit different because I wanted to stress that the command form is more common. So, for example, the first two um, incidents, right? Coloque as caixas no carro, por favor. Coloque as caixas no carro, por favor. So I'm telling you, put the boxes in the car, please. Um, colocar, I was told, was is, is used quite a bit, quite often in recipes. So I actually looked up a recipe, and this is where I got the second example. Coloque a massa na geladeira. Coloque a massa na geladeira. Put the crust in the refrigerator for a certain amount of time. Okay, a question in the past. Quem colocou este, este prato sujo aqui? Quem colocou este prato sujo aqui? Eu vou colocar isso na minha mala. I'm going to put that in my suitcase. Right? So again, here I could also use the verb por. I could also use the verb guardar. Right? Eu vou guardar isso na minha mala. Okay, common verb number 23 is tirar. Not number 23 in terms of frequency, because I think if this were a ranking of frequency, tirar would be much higher. It's a very common verb, right? Its basic meaning is to remove, to take something off, or to take something away, but it has many idiomatic uses. As you can see on this slide, I've included five uses. There are many more if you look up the verb tirar in a dictionary, okay? So, you can use it to say that you're removing something or eliminating something, right? So, tirar as manchas da roupa, to get the stains out of your clothes. To take something off, right? Like an article of clothing. Tirar os sapatos. Tirar o chapéu. Hat. To take something away from someone, right? The teacher took the cell phone away from, using the preposition de. 
from the student. Chidoru celula du alunu. To take a picture, this is an idiomatic expression that's used super frequently. Chidar fotos, chidar uma foto. Or to take some days off, chidar ferias, right? Chidar ferias. And again, just scratching the surface on the uses of this verb chidar. Okay, here then are some examples of those uses of the verb chidar. To take pictures. Meu pai não tira muitas fotos. Vocês tiram os sapatos na sua casa? You take your shoes off in your home. Tiramos sim, para não sujar o piso. O professor tirou suas dúvidas. Did the professor re resolve your concerns or answer your questions? This is sort of in the sense of that use of to eliminate or to remove something. But it's an idiomatic expression. Tirar suas dúvidas. Ele tirou sim. O Daniel vai tirar férias em maio? Tirar férias to take some time off. Is he going to? Você deve tirar o chapéu na catedral. Do over construction with the verb dever, to must or to should do something. Você deve tirar o chapéu na catedral. Okay, verb number 24 in our list of common verbs in Brazilian Portuguese is sair, which means to leave, to go out, to exit. Um, you can see there are several kind of irregularities in the conjugation of the verb in the present and the past. So, have a look at those. Now, some of the common uses, of course, um, to leave or to exit a place or an event, okay, to go out with someone, right, to go out like on the town, to go out and do something with people, or to go out and do something. Sair para dançar, por exemplo. So I can say, sair com meus amigos. Vamos sair. Eu vou sair com meus amigos. Vamos sair para ir ao cinema. And here are some examples of those uses of the verb sair, right? He has to leave the meeting. Ele precisa sair da reunião. Do you get off work, right? Sair do trabalho. Você sai do trabalho às cinco da tarde? Não. Não saio às cinco. Saio às sete e meia. Um, did your parents go out for dinner? Did they go out to do something? In this case, go out for dinner. Seus pais saíram para jantar ontem? Sairam sim. Amanhã vou sair com meus amigos. So, who I'm going out with tomorrow? Vou sair com meus amigos. A Márcia gosta de sair com seu noivo. She likes to go out with her fiancé. Verb number 25 on our list of very common um, everyday Brazilian Portuguese verbs is andar, which means to walk or to ride. You can probably tell by how busy this slide is that it's an extremely common verb in Brazilian Portuguese. So, related verbs are caminhar, to walk, and also the verb estar. And I put that on there because in some cases, andar can be used to express somebody's mood, how somebody's been. And you might also use estar in those circumstances. So, common uses, to walk, andar, right? Vamos andar, let's walk. To indicate the speed that something moves at, right? Andar rápido. O andar lento, devagar. You talk about how fast or slow a car is, how fast or slow a computer is, right? <laughs> how fast or slow a person is mentally even. Um, anyways, to ride, right? Andar. To ride in or on something. Andar de bicicleta. Or more specific, right? Andar a cavalo. So notice the prepositions being used. So this sense of to be, right? To be an adjective, right? So um, he's busy. Ele anda muito ocupado, right? Or she's a little bit sad. Ela anda um pouco triste. Okay? So you could use estar. Ela está um pouco triste, right? Um, to ask what someone's been up to, right? When you haven't seen a person for a while, how's what's so and so been up to? Where's so and so been lately? This is a very idiomatic, idiomatic use of andar. These two questions, but they're extremely common. Extremely common, right? So if I walk into a store and I see a friend and they want to ask me about another friend who they haven't seen for a while, they might say, ah, yeah, por onde ele anda, right? Where's he been? What's he been up to? Por onde ele anda? Or what have you been up to? Where have you been? What have you been up to? Onde você tem andado? So these are very specific idiomatic uses of, an, uh, of andar, but they're very common. Let's take a look at some of those common uses in these examples. So this idea of, of an emotion or a state of mind, right? Ele anda meio triste ultimamente, right? Meio, before an adjective, means 
a little bit, sort of, right? Ele anda meio triste ultimamente. He's been sort of sad lately. What's he been up to? Yeah, I haven't, you know, I haven't heard about João lately. What's he been up to? Por onde ele anda? Where's he been all this time? Right? Or, my computer's really slow. O meu PC, o meu computador, anda muito lento, muito devagar. I rode my bike this morning. Eu andei de bicicleta hoje de manhã. Andei de bicicleta. Right? Um, are we going to walk in the park later on? Vamos andar no parque mais tarde. And Luis knows how to ride a horse. Sabe andar, again, that dual verb construction, saber plus verb. O Luis sabe andar a cavalo. Verb number 26 is chegar, to arrive. Chegar. You can see the forms. There's a slight irregularity in the first person in the past. Cheguei, cheguei, in terms of the, the spelling. Um, the first three uses you can see would be exact parallels to uses of the verb to arrive in English. But the fourth and fifth uses, right, are a little bit different. They're idiomatic. So, of course, you can talk about arriving at a destination, to arrive at the station, chegar à estação, or to get to work, chegar ao trabalho, to arrive at a certain day or time, chegar no sábado, chegar às oito da noite. But then that fourth use, right, if you want to tell someone, okay, that's enough. Stop. Knock it off. That's enough. Chega. Chega. Very common expression, right? All right, just stop it. Chega. Or you can be specific, right? Stop doing whatever it is. Chega de falar tanto. Stop talking so much. Chega, right? And then there's a much more affectionate, almost the diametric opposite of that, right? Um, if you want to tell someone to co come closer, right? Chega mais. It's short for chega mais perto. Examples of those uses of the verb chegar, right? I always get home at six. Sempre chego em casa às seis da tarde. Does your sister arrive on Saturday? Sua irmã chega no sábado. Here's a good example of that present tense being used to express something that will happen in the future, right? Does she arrive on Saturday? It's the future. Sua irmã chega no sábado? Não. Ela chega no domingo. A que horas você chegou ontem? Past action. A que horas você chegou ontem? Cheguei às cinco e meia da tarde, por exemplo. Nós vamos chegar amanhã. Future. And then a dual verb construction with dever and chegar. O trem deve chegar em dez minutos. Common verb number 27 is jogar. Jogar. Which means to play, right? To play something competitive usually. Jogar. It's related to the verb in the sense of to play. Brincar. Which might be also to play, but maybe to play with someone, to play to play with toys, brincar, right? So to play or also to throw or to throw something away, jogar, okay? You can see it also has a slight irregularity in the first person of the past, joguei, very similar to cheguei for the same reason, right? So common uses to play a sport, jogar basquete, jogar tennis, jogar futebol, right? Um, to play games, especially video games, Jogar video games. To throw something, jogar a bola. If you want to throw the ball to somebody. To throw so, to throw away something, right? It, jogar fora. Ou jogar no lixo. Throw something in the trash. Okay. And here we see some examples of those uses of the verb jogar, to play or to throw away. Eles não jogam futebol aos domingos. They don't play soccer on Sundays. Você joga basquete na faculdade? Você joga basquete na faculdade? Jogo sim, depois das minhas aulas. Você jogou esse papel no chão? So to throw something down on the ground, right? Você jogou esse papel no chão? Past tense. Eu vou jogar fora. Vou jogar fora aquele sofá velho. I'm going to throw it out. Jogar fora. It's almost a literal translation, right? Jogar fora, to throw out. O João adora jogar videogames. Dual verb construction with adorar, to love to do something. Ele adora jogar video games. All right, verb number 28 in our list of common Brazilian Portuguese, Portuguese verbs is pegar, which means to pick up or to grab or catch. And if you're a Spanish speaker, you've probably noticed that many of the verbs, um, which might look like they're cognates with Spanish verb forms, may have different meanings. So, for example, pegar, one of the meanings is not to hit someone, pegar, 
right? Or to stick something to something, pegar. It has those meanings in Spanish, but not in Portuguese, right? So again, you see that spelling irregularity because of the G, G-U-E-I in the past tense, eu pegue. Let's look at what the common uses in Portuguese are. You can see there are many of them. It's to pick something up, right? Pegar uns documentos no escritório. So I'm going to swing by work and pick up those documents. To grab something, to actually pick something up, maybe from the ground. Pegar uma moeda no chão, right? Pick up a coin on the ground. Um, to pick someone up, right? Pegar seu filho na escola. In Spanish, this would be recoger. To catch something, someone throws the ball to you, right? Jogar a bola, we'll say pega a bola, right? But you can also catch a cold or the flu, um resfriado, gripe. You can catch someone in the act, right? Pegar alguém fazendo algo, right? In this case, pegar um empregado roubando. And then to catch the bus, pegar o ônibus. So here's some examples of those uses of the verb pegar. Nós pegamos esse ônibus toda sexta-feira. We take that bus. We catch that bus. Você pega seus filhos na escola? Você pega seus filhos na escola? Eu não pego, não. I don't pick them up. Minha esposa faz isso. She does. Você pegou seu filho mentindo? Did you catch your son lying? Você pegou ele mentindo? Vou pegar os livros depois da aula. I'm going to pick the books up. Pick up the books. O goleiro precisa pegar a bola. The goalie needs to catch or stop that ball. Guys, I promise we're in the home stretch now. This is verb number 29. Only five more super important common everyday verbs to go. Abrir means to open, of course. Look at all the regular forms. And then the common uses to talk about a business or a shop or something like that opening, maybe at a certain time or on a certain day or to open or unlock something. So you can use abrir to talk about something that's locked as well. Here are some examples of those uses of the verb abrir. If I want to say the bank doesn't open today, negative statement. O banco não abre hoje. If I want to say it does, right? O banco abre hoje sim. What time does that store open? A que horas abre essa loja? Abre às nove da manhã. Who opened that window? Quem abriu essa janela? Quem abriu essa janela? Future. Você vai abrir um escritório no centro? Você vai abrir um escritório no centro? Are you going to open an office downtown? No centro? And then Michelle wants to open the package. Straightforward use of abrir. A Michelle quer abrir a encomenda. So, verb number 30. Common verb would be fechar. We just saw abrir to open. Fechar is to close. You can see all its regular forms here on the slide. Common uses, of course, would be talking about a business or a store or a restaurant opening and closing on certain days or at certain times, or to close something like a door, a window, a box, whatever it happens to be. So let's take a look at some examples of the verb fechar, to close. Affirmative statement. O comércio fecha cedo hoje. O comércio. Those are the retail businesses, right? The shops. They're closing early today. Fecha cedo. Você fecha as janelas antes de dormir? Do you close the windows? Só fecho as janelas quando faz frio. I only close them when it's cold. Why did that restaurant close so early? Or why did they close it? Por que fecharam o restaurante tão cedo? Who's going to close that door? Quem vai fechar essa porta? Felipe needs to close or lock the garage securely. O Felipe precisa fechar bem, fechar bem a garagem. Okay, super common verb number 31, and it is super common, is achar, which is used to mean to think, to believe, or to find. And so some related verbs are pensar, in the sense of to think or to believe, acreditar, to believe, or to find something, it's a synonym of Encontrar. So you can see that its forms are regular. Common uses include, you might say you agree or disagree. Acho que sim. Acho que não. Um, to state that someone believes something, right? Or their opinion, right? Achar que, and then a, then a phrase. To find something like your keys. Achei as chaves. I found the, I found the keys. And then there's an idiomatic use, right? Which is very specific. 
which is the reflexive use of ashar, si ashar, when someone is conceited, has a really high opinion of themselves, right? Ele se acha, ele se acha, ou ela se acha. So here are some examples of those uses of the verb achar, okay? Negative statement involving finding the keys. Eu não acho minhas chaves. Eu não acho minhas chaves. Question. Você acha que tenho razão? Você acha que tenho razão? Do you think? Right? No. Eu não acho. Or no. Eu acho que não. I don't think so. So there's two expressions. Acho que sim. I think so. And acho que não. I don't think so. Which are extremely common. Um, what do you think about the concert? Or what did you think? Past tense. O que você achou do show? O que você achou do show? Okay. What do you think of it? What was your opinion of it? Achei legal. I thought it was cool. Right? Achei show o show. Eles vão achar que sou louco. They're going to think I'm crazy. Eles vão achar que sou louco. That's going to be their opinion. right? Their impression. And then this final use of someone being stuck up or conceited or thinking they're the greatest. Essa mulher deve se achar o máximo. She must think she's the greatest. All right, verb number 32 on our list of common verbs in Brazilian Portuguese is pensar. Pensar. So it shares some similarities with achar, right? And you can see the forms are regular. Common uses are just to think in general. Você pensa muito. Do you think a lot? Eu penso muito, whatever. Um, to think that, right? In other words, I think that this blah, 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 right? Eu penso que, ele pensa que, right? And then to think about using the, the prepositions de, em, or sobre, right? So let's look at some examples of those uses of the verb pensar, right? An affirmative statement, he thinks too much. Ele pensa demais, demais. What do you think about, right? What's your impression or opinion about? O que você pensa desse filme? What do you think about that movie? I think it's great. I think it's really good. Eu penso que é muito bom. Past tense. Você pensou sobre o meu problema? Did you think about it? Future. Ele vai pensar que sou louco. Right? Remember from the previous verb. Eles vão achar que sou louco. So very similar. Ele vai pensar que sou louco. Or ela, I guess it says. I'm sorry. Ela vai pensar que sou louco. Um, and then a dual verb construction with precisar, to need to. Nós precisamos pensar em uma solução. We need to think of a solution. And that brings us to verb 33, second to last verb on our countdown, sentir, to feel. You can see there's an irregular present tense first person form, eu sinto, the regular forms, the other forms are regular. So how is sentir used? Okay. It's used in the expression, I'm very sorry, eu sinto muito, right? It's used to express how, um, how well someone feels, right? Um, someone can feel better, someone can feel worse, someone can feel badly, better, bang, okay? Um, we'll get to some examples of that. To feel an emotion, so the verb sentir and then a noun that indicates an emotion, so sentir tristeza, sentir felicidade, sentir ansiedade, right? To feel that, so sinto que, senti que, sentimos que, or to miss someone, you can say sentir falta de, or even sentir saudades, okay? Let's take a quick look at some examples of the verb sentir, of those uses. So if you want to say I'm very sorry, you know, eu sinto muito, sinto muito. So it can be shortened to just sinto muito, or it can be longer, a little bit more eloquent, right? Eu sinto muito, desculpe-me por favor. Um, do you feel okay? Você se sente bem? Eu me sinto bem, right? Answer, eu me sinto muito bem, obrigado. Um, did your mother miss you? Sua mãe sentiu sua falta? A sua mãe sentiu sua falta? Sentiu saudades de você? Right? Um, your father's going to feel better. Future. Seu pai vai se sentir melhor depois. Vai se sentir melhor depois. What are you feeling right now? Right? Good, great psychologist question, I guess. I don't know. O que você está sentindo agora? O que, o que você está sentindo agora? 
And finally, if you've made it this far, congratulations. Hopefully it's been worthwhile. Um, the 34th verb in our list of very common everyday verbs in Brazilian Portuguese, which are mostly regular, is perceber, perceber, which means to realize something or to notice something. Okay? It's very often used in this very first um, use down here, perceber que. So it introduces another clause, right? Percebo que. Você percebe que? Blah, blah, blah. And finally, here are some examples of uses of the verb perceber, to notice, to realize. You can use it with a noun, such as details. Eu percebo vários detalhes. I notice several things, several details. Você percebe quando eles mentem? Do you notice it? Can you tell when? Você percebe quando eles mentem? Can you tell or do you notice when they lie? Percebo sim, or whatever. No. Eu geralmente não percebo. I don't notice. I don't realize it. Não percebo. Um, did she realize? Did she notice that you were sad? A Ana percebeu que você estava triste. Ela percebeu sim. Um, and he's not going to notice. He won't even notice, right? O Jorge nem vai perceber se você não for, if you don't go. He's not even going to notice if you don't go. Nem vai perceber. So, to notice. All right, well, that's it for lesson nine. Finally, if you've made it this far, congratulations. I did warn you it was gonna be a long one, but still, I hope you found my presentation on these 34 key verbs to be informative and useful. If so, please share it with others, and let me know, of course, if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, okay? Be sure to catch my next lesson in the series, and don't forget to look for me on your favorite social media platforms. I'm just about everywhere. Thanks very much again for watching, and be sure to visit the Professor Jason channel again soon. Até breve, tchau. Eu vou pra Oslo, pra sair no...